This is Dead Serious, a show about short horror stories worthy of discussion. I'm Dead Palette, your friendly local tobacco lobbyist. Today we're going to be taking a look at a story from TooSpooky.com. That's T-O-O Spooky.com. This story is brought to us by Wolfman Lou, who wrote a story entitled The Circuit Board. Let's get right into it. At the age of 22, I had finally saved up enough money from working to put down a security deposit and rent an extra month in advance on a house. It wasn't anything fancy as anyone's first home is. A simple, single-level, three-bedroom, one-bath. Hell, I didn't even really need the extra bedrooms, but it was nice to have a sort of office space and a spare room for storage. It even had a basement which, like most suburban homes, was where the washing machine and dryer were kept. So this is something I think a lot of, you know, young people right now can relate to. Uh, their first time uh, getting out there in the world, getting a nice, um, you know, house instead of an apartment or living with your parents like, you know, the the people out there that are man-children like me. I um, am liking how this is going so far. I get a good idea of who our narrator is, probably making a, a decent amount of money for someone their age, considering they're they are getting to this point where they can uh, rent a house, and, and, you know, I'm liking where this is going. The idea of having a place of your own is a bit of a double-edged sword. There is the freedom to do whatever you please, but then, living alone as I did, all the responsibilities fall to one person, not to mention the occasional pangs of loneliness. I didn't have many friends, and the ones I did, I didn't see often. It wasn't a big deal to me, though. People grow up and apart sometimes. So again, this is something very above board with what you would expect a young person to be saying. Um, you know, you, you do kind of go through that period in your life of like, man, who are my real friends? You know, who, who am I going to keep close? And, you know, are these people my friends if I don't see them that often? Coming to terms with that. And then you just kind of realize, oh yeah, uh, they're adults. I'm an adult. And sometimes we don't have free time to hang out and, you know, making time for that sounds, you know, this is all really mundane stuff. And it's like you, you, you read this and you're like, yeah, sometimes it'd be like that. You know what I mean? It's very conversational, um, but it's still structured uh, in a somewhat formal way. You know, we are getting a clear beginning. Um, anyway, I'm I'm rambling. Let's continue on. I spend most of my time working, coming home, drinking beer, and watching TV. Rents repeat. It might sound a bit depressing, and that's because it was. It got dull, because it was a routine at least. A bit of reprieve after grueling days machining car parts in a shop. Okay, so they do have a very, um, they would have a probably decently well-paying job if they are doing machine work in car shops as opposed to, you know, working in retail or, you know, the, the kind of jobs that millennials tend to go along with. I, I, you know, I'm assuming our author is a, is a millennial and um, I'm also assuming our narrator is, but that's the kind of tone I'm getting from this. I could be wrong. One hot summer night, I sat on my couch, drowning another, downing another Labatt Blue. A storm warning flashed onto the screen. It had been a bit windy during the day, and in Michigan, that's usually a good sign that the evening with, that the evening with be a rainy, thunderous mess. Should be, will be. My county was included in the warning, but I paid no mind considering I found the rain calming, even though the lightning flashes and roars from the sky. Even through the lightning flashes and roars from the sky. Okay, so I like the nice detail of what kind of beer it is. This person likes to drink Labatt Blue. I like the details of where we're living, um, you know, you know, backing up the whole car parts machining and all of that kind of stuff. This is all working and we're setting the scene for a potential you know, storm on the horizon. I continued staring at the in inane sitcom glowing through the glass in front of me when the first thunder spoke and raindrops began to fall. I sighed and took a nip of beer, feeling cozy. I slumped back and phased out the television. Uh, phased out the television? 
listening to the drone of precipitation hitting my roof when I was brought back to reality by the sudden darkness of my power going out. Okay, so I think we've all been there, um, not doing anything with your life, you know, watching something that's probably stupid and, you know, just, you know, not good for you, you know, not culturally enriching, not doing anything for you, not intellectually stimulating you, and, you know, you're doing it anyway. <laughs> you're, you're conscious of the fact that it's not getting, you're not getting anything out of it, but you still do it. And then, um, they're kicked out of this. They're cut off from this weird addiction to an inane sitcom, as they put it. Um, so what will happen in this little crisis we have? Fuck me, I muttered to myself. Quickly, I stood up to grab a flashlight from the junk drawer in the kitchen. Being in the dark was always my biggest fear, as childish as it sounds, especially alone. Clicking the switch on the light, of course it had dead batteries. I shuddered slightly, dreading going into the basement with nothing to show me the way. So it seems as though, um, not necessarily like a fear of the dark, just like, shit, I could trip and break my ankle, which I guess is, you know, how we evolved to fear the dark is stuff like that and predators and whatnot. Carefully and cautiously, I opened the door to the underground laundry room. It had a slight damp smell, not unusual for a basement, but my fear amplified to it amplified it to a horrid stench. I gripped uh, I gripped the railing as I made my way down the steps, trying to recall the location of the circuit board. Okay, so <laughs> there's that normal basement smell, and their mind is amplifying it to something worse than it actually is. We're just getting details that are you know, very paint-by-numbers stuff that you would expect to do. Very mundane, very grounding. We have two paragraphs left, um, wondering where the horror is going to come in. Hopefully we'll get something significant here uh, that will pull this story together. I've really enjoyed the grounding and everything, but I do want some sort of gut punch at the end. When I reached the bottom, the sound of raindrops left my ears completely, not just from being underneath the house, but from this, but it suddenly became dead quiet. My hands started to shake, the terror becoming much stronger inside me. I ran for the board and opened it, checking for the pop circuit. They were all in place. I flipped the master breaker to no avail. God damn it, blackout, I growled, shaking like a leaf before winter. I turned to return upstairs. Okay, very practical, you know, situation here, having a blackout. Um, we kind of have this bizarre, preternatural situation where they go, uh, into the basement and it seems as though all of the raindrops stop altogether, or at least they can't hear them. And that's a little weird. I turn and, uh, I turned and abruptly my shaking stopped. My body rendered frozen. Standing about six feet in front of me was a pair of eyes floating in the air, alien. A pair of floating, undilated pupils peering back at me. I felt a horrid searing in my heart, perhaps my soul. I choked, trying to let out a scream, a cry of pure horror, but a sudden wave of calmness overtook me, the pure silence becoming nearly tranquil. My joints and muscles unlocked as I slowly being, as I slowly should be began. Yeah, I slowly began to step towards the glaring oculi. There, ladies and gentlemen, is our finale. So essentially what is happening is we're getting a grounding into who this character is. Um, they are interested they they are a person who's not living up to their potential, right? They are a person who's intaking sitcoms and low quality beer. They are, um, you, you know, the, the person who wrote this uh, Wolfman Lou. They have a photo of themselves in a mask, smoking cigarettes, so they're probably a smoker. That's a that's a complete stretch, but just follow me here. Um, context is important, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so this person is you know, trying to save up money to, you know, get this house and everything. They've done that. They're trying to better themselves. They are kind of, you know, uh, not willing to take on all of that responsibility yet. And uh, 
you know, are, are having trouble managing friends and also their professional life. And, you know, maybe they're just exhausted at the end of the day. Maybe they don't have time for friends, enough energy for friends. Um, they're just vegging out with, you know, a glowing screen and then that is ripped from them. And what happens to them when they are being deprived a while tipsy from this glowing box? Um, this call to action of sorts that is taking them downstairs uh, to the circuit breaker where they see something um, they describe as alien. Now, they're not saying it is an alien. They're saying that it is something entirely alien to them. It could very well be something completely natural. It could be a possum that's made its way down there, a skunk. Um, you know, any number of wildlife animals that could have burrowed its way into the house. But in this scenario, they are feeling alone. They are feeling, um, afraid. And now that they are seeing these eyes, they are, you know, pulled back from horror and a calmness is overtaking them. Uh, a s sort of supernatural reaction that they are having uh, my joints and muscles unlocked and i slowly began to step towards the glowing oculi so there's something about this that is attracting them in some fashion this is what you would really want out of a story without definite answers because even though we don't have definite answers we do have plenty of room to theorize and there is a clear arc to this character uh, they're trying to take on uh, responsibility. They're trying to better themselves. Uh, and now that that has been, you, you know, this lazy sitcom has been ripped away from them, you know, what else is in store for them? I really like this. Um, it's it's not trying to be something bigger than it is. It is it is a little bit of keyhole fiction. We don't know where the glowing eyes are coming from. And you know, there, there are a million stories that could be written along these lines of, and then I saw something and it was creepy and I walked towards it. That's a very easy thing to do. Saw something creepy, walked towards it, um, you know, started obeying the Slender Man. This is kind of a obeying the Slender Man moment, becoming a proxy of some sort. Um, I know that that's a very played out concept, but this story is doing it exceedingly well, I think. Let me know what you think, what your interpretation is. Maybe I'm off base. Maybe you think that this isn't enough of an ending, that this was, um, you know, too big of a ramp up because it is kind of abrupt, isn't it? Um, how quickly this turned from being a very mundane day where there's a power outage to, uh, something supernatural and something that our narrator described as alien. But I certainly enjoyed it. Uh, it, it felt, um, earned and it didn't feel, um, overly gratuitous. Even though there were very few details given about what this being potentially is. Now, if you enjoyed that, consider checking out the Fear Fiction Podcast where three assholes, Talking Basement Goose, Slime Beast, Inebriated Interstellar Traveler, Abysme, and myself read all stories horror and internet related, paragraph by paragraph, and bullshit while we do it. From adolescent revenge fantasies to subtle postmodern narratives about real life events and everything in between, we read them and we critique them. Link to that is down in the description. Thank you so much for your time, and now on to our sponsor at this non-moment in time, which is Labatt Blue. Labatt Blue, Canadian for beer.